Hi everyone, my name is Katherine Bennett. I want to talk with you about honesty and trust in business relationships while focusing on the Fitzgerald Machine Company case scenario. In this scenario, the seller is faced with the opportunity to deceive their buyer. And the questions I will focus on are, is this deception appropriate? And the potential consequences for it. Business relationships should start with all parties acting in good faith and with the expectation that each can be trusted. In our readings during this course, much attention has been given to honesty, integrity, and trust in the scenarios of lies and deception. Solomon introduced us to the damage that lies and deception can cause. The most significant damage can be the loss of trust in his reasoning ponders if the long-term damage caused by lies and deception is really outweighed by the short-term benefits. McFall introduced us to the thinkings of one's integrity and coherence and acting in ways that could discredit that integrity. McFall explains that one may have solid, good moral principles. However, it is when one chooses to act against them in a dishonest way that one creates mistrust and calls into question their integrity. In the case of the Fitzgerald Machine Company, the company executives are provided an opportunity to deceive their customer. The customer has placed a $300,000 order, but must delay delivery of their order due to a labor dispute. Executives at Fitzgerald agree to hold the shipment as requested, granted that the customer honors the original payment agreement and terms. The customer agrees to these terms and conditions. At this point in time, both parties have acted honestly and in good faith. In this case scenario, there are two situations that are introduced in the business transaction that jeopardize this honesty. First, Fitzgerald realizes that they cannot meet the production deadline. This is not a unique situation in that the company has an internal problem in general with meeting deadlines. Second, a company executive wants to bill the buyer for storage of the products until the new delivery time while knowing the products will actually not be completed during this quote unquote storage period. Let's examine the two problems individually. The order can't be filled by the date expected. This was the original delivery date. Because the buyer has already been in contact with the company and requested a delay in delivery, this in itself does not appear to be a problem. The buyer isn't expecting the product and therefore themselves will not be harmed by the delay. However, the buyer's request to delay was accepted by the seller under specific terms, which themselves became an addendum to the original buyer-seller contract of purchase. Given the dollar amount of the sale, $300,000, it is likely some sort of contract for this transaction was made before work was started. In this scenario, it was mentioned that the delivery, delivery delay would not change the terms and dates of payment, giving nod to this contract. The new specifics agreed upon for the delay in delivery, even if only verbal, became part of the buyer-seller contract at the time it was agreed upon. Any violation of the terms of this contract by both or either party creates an unethical situation. At this point in time, the seller is faced with a dilemma. According to McFall, this type of conflict is the time in which morals and integrity are tested. The options here the seller must ponder are to notify the buyer of their own delay or simply fail to mention the delay and lead the customer to believe the order was ready as promised. The second option is tempting. This would prevent a delay in billing the customer and most often allow the company to keep their right, their payment be made to them. No doubt the seller has counted on being at a particular time, uh, being paid at a particular time to possibly cover their own expenses and materials and labor. What is the likelihood that the buyer would ever find out? Is this okay? I don't believe that it's okay for the seller to lead the buyer in thinking that their order was complete when in fact it was not. Both parties have entered into an agreement with good faith and trust. By presenting that the order has been completed as expected when it has not, 
the seller is deceiving the buyer and thus violating acts of good faith and trust. This creates a fraction in the future relationship between these parties. We discussed earlier in this course how vital honest relationships are. This sort of deception, deception damages the ability of the buyer to fully trust the seller, a factor that could prevent the customer from doing business with the seller in the future. The second dilemma in this scenario is that on top of not disclosing the untimeliness of completion, the seller wants to charge the buyer a storage fee while holding the products during the delay period. This action takes the not acting in good faith a giant leap further. Now the dishonesty of the seller will harm the buyer in terms of financial expense. And I believe this to be absolutely wrong. Seeking a storage fee for an order that isn't even complete is straight out deception and unacceptable. I would think that if the seller paid and later learned of this, their relationship would be completely broken and there would be no further business between these parties. One might argue that even if the complete order is not ready, but some or most would be, that it would be okay to charge a storage fee. And I think that storage fee for completed items might have been okay if it had been agreed upon when discussing the terms the buyer's request at the time the buyer made the request for the delay in shipment. Since it was not part of that addendum to the contract, I don't believe it is okay for the seller to add this on at their will. This sort of action, again, breaks the duties to act in good faith and trust. Additionally, this could also lead into possibly some legal consequences as well. Joseph Ellen describes deception as either true statements that mislead or actions which convey a false impression or deliberate withholding of information where a person is misled into drawing a false impression. Deception doesn't always have to be what is said. The mere making someone believe something can in, in itself result in deception. I believe based on these descriptions, the executives of Fitzgerald Machine Company will be guilty of deceiving their customer if they present the order as completed when it is not, or if they charge the customer a storage fee that was not already agreed upon and for items not actually being stored. These types of actions will inhibit not only future contracts between Fitzgerald and the customer, but it is likely the customer will share their negative experience with others who may look to do business with Fitzgerald, but choose not to because they feel they can't be trusted.